200 kilometers off the coast of Scotland, the 320-meter tanker, the Seawise Giant, sails with a full load of oil bound for the northern coast of Spain. Having left the Sullum Vaux oil and gas terminal in the Shetland Islands hours earlier, the ship is making only 10 knots against a gusting North Sea wind. Aboard the ship, the crew show little awareness nor interest in the far-off war taking place in the Baltics. With the war into its second day, the belief among many is that the conflict is strictly a regional one, confined to the Baltics alone. They are woefully mistaken. Hours earlier, NATO conducted an airstrike inside Kaliningrad, destroying several of Russia's mobile tactical nukes. Russia was now prepared for retribution, aiming deep into the heart of NATO. Aboard the Seawise Giant, crew members were unaware of their mortal peril as a single Russian Zircon anti-ship missile approached. Designed as a carrier killer, the missile slammed into the defenseless ship at a speed nearing Mach 8. The tanker sank within moments, taking her entire crew with her and sending a torrent of over a million gallons of burning oil into the water. From across the North Sea, more missiles were in the air, bound for targets critical to NATO. War had come to Western Europe. Prior to the invasion, Russian President Dmitry Kozak gambled that the war he was to initiate against the countries of Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania would remain there, that NATO would be adverse to expanding the fight beyond the Baltic borders. That hope ended with NATO's airstrike inside Russian territory. Furious, and by some accounts shaken by the news of the Kaliningrad attack, Kozak ordered the launch of Operation Rift. Prepared as a contingency months in advance, the objective of Operation Rift was to cripple oil and gas production in the North Sea, sending a clear message to the leading members of NATO that their countries were not immune to Russia's military reach. Below the surface of the North Sea, three Russian Yasen-class submarines kicked off the operation, launching their payload of hypersonic cruise missiles. Travelling at nearly 11,000 kilometres per hour, the missiles soon reached their targets. Striking three oil and gas platforms off the coast of Aberdeen, Scotland, as well as the oil tanker, the aerial, and the offshore support vessel, the Foynaven, killing hundreds, severing oil and gas production throughout the North Sea, and initiating what would later be the largest offshore rescue operation in human history. Farther south, the strike proved less effective as a wave of missiles targeting the Central Area Transmission System, a natural gas processing terminal in northeast England, was intercepted by a UK Skysaber air defence system, providing a brief but dramatic fireworks display for citizens in the coastal city of Sunderland. Meanwhile, to the far north, racing over the Norwegian Sea, three blackjack bombers originating from the Olenya Air Base on the Kola Peninsula released their own missiles. These targeted oil and gas platforms west of the Shetland Islands, as well as the Sullumvo oil and gas terminal. Arriving unopposed, the Russian missiles struck their targets, killing 240, damaging or destroying numerous facilities and cutting power to much of the Shetland Islands for months. At the Evernes Air Station in northern Norway, two of a total of four F-35s scrambled to intercept the Russian aircraft as the Blackjack bombers gave a wide berth to the mainland for their flight back to base. Rocketing northward over Andoya in pursuit, Lieutenant Colonel Bjorn Enoksen calculated his chances of success. With drop tanks installed, his F-35's range was extended, but it came at the cost of both stealth and speed. He judged that catching the blackjacks was going to be a very near thing. In the end, it wasn't. 150 miles out over the Norwegian Sea, Enochsen and his wingmen received urgent orders to turn back. Air defence stations at Banak had detected a new flight of Russian aircraft on a course for what appeared to be a cruise missile strike on the Avenes air station. Turning to the south, Lieutenant Colonel Enoxon could only watch in frustration as the blackjacks slipped away, his frustration turning to fury as he would later learn that the incoming Russian airstrike had been a simple feint, designed to draw off Norway's thin combat air patrol in the north. If NATO doesn't get us more fighters and a carrier up here, Enoxon fumed, the Russians can keep doing this until they run out of goddamn cruise missiles. 
or run out of targets. In the next episode, the battle for the North Sea continues, as the hunters become the hunted. If you enjoy this series, please help out John, the guy who makes this all possible, by liking, subscribing and sharing this video. You can also contribute and collaborate directly through the Flat Circle History Patreon site. Thanks for watching.